Hello and welcome back everyone to Wings of Liberty on Rocket Rabbit Commentaries and in this episode we are back on the Hyperion Bridge and we'll be going into another cutscene. I caught Titus hacking into a shadows, sniffing around about the territory. I don't know what his name is, but we clearly Yeah, but Matt, we've got this whole backlog thing going that we've never bothered to explain before, so... When the law finally caught up, uh, took the rap for more of saving us. Private Ryan Never references that are lost on Gerda. <laughs> I got a second chance. He got locked up. I understand your loyalty, sir, but I owe him Matt. Leave it be. Yeah, I Matt. Like Matt. Matt is a very good person. Matt is a very good person. He must be. He has a biblical name. Is Horner a biblical name? No, Matt is a biblical name. <laughs> Well, Matthew is a biblical name. I don't think Matt itself is. Must be hard, man. See Must be hard, Mateus. I have a name How much do that, you know about like, 40 billion I trillion people share throughout the galaxy. Academy. That girl was a legend even before she disappeared from the program. There's a few that know the truth. How the Queen of Blades came to be. Well, we She's know how the Queen of Blades came now. to be. Oh, yes. Mm, why, well, yes, because that was the entirety of StarCraft One story. Don't kill her. Well, She'll the first half of StarCraft One story, rather. Let's see what's on TV. This is Donnie Vermillion live from UNN. Donnie V. Tonight, we're going to discuss the infamous Queen of Blades. Scientists and military insiders have long speculated that the enigmatic alien is, in fact, an infested human. Mostly that's because right, that's Donnie. exactly what is she is, and we can prove that it. The leader of the Zerg has a human heart. More importantly, Kate, could this mean some kind of Terran Zerg alliance is possible? No, it is or, not. At Donnie, least not at this time. There's never been this any evidence just speculation? at all to suggest that infested humans retain their free will. You make a good point, Kate. The yes, is, because then, that's what we did we to the humans nukes. earlier in the that's campaign. We all can agree on. Destroy the effing crap survive, out of them. The Queen of Blades needs to be eliminated. Mm. For the record, Zerglings are ver are uh, are uh, very affected by nukes. Okay, the right place. Okay, future Gerda, you've been prompted by past Gerda. Um, unfortunately, past uh, present Gerda was not actually uh, paying attention to uh, past Gerda. God damn it. Ah. So but, now that yeah, hey, um, hey, message reception grand. <laughs> the big thing about the big thing about a majority of Wings of Liberty story is that we're dealing with the fact that Rainer has got a lot of past guilt uh, that he unfortunately refuses to let go of. Yeah, and, that's a theme in a lot of stories we find, especially around the two thousands, which is when this game came out. Mm, marauders. I will be getting the Marauders concussive shells. I don't know if I'm getting the kinetic form or not. Is the Marauders possible? concussive shells uh, add us a really significant slow to both attack speed and movement speed. And as it's shown off right here, yeah, you can like absolutely rip apart uh, enemy Protoss forces with that slow. It, does, it doesn't work so well on Zerglings, but Zerglings only take two shots from Marauders to kill anyway. Normally, a, a squad of equivalent zealots would absolutely rip apart a squad of marauders, but given uh, concussive shells and terrain advantage, those marauders uh, take almost no damage from that uh, from that source. Yes, because you cannot attack a foe who lies on a higher terrain if you have a melee Nobody weapon. Wants us to go after another mm, jump, cut. Yes, truth and illusions. Is it possible? That yeah, Raynor is thinking too much into what he really could have done to stop Kerrigan from becoming the Queen of Blades. Yes, he is. This place is a morgue. Whatever you And I agree. Ruins up and died millions of years ago. Before they went missing, the Mobius team reported artifact radiation emanating from that. Big old hunk of rock. It is a giant hunk of rock, Mr. Tychus. They brought a big damn laser drill to burn the way in. Laser drill? The whole place yeah, smells like farts. I if just hope you're ready. If the Mobius team to that kind of hardware, I need to think about what could have wiped them out. It's not a xenomorph, I promise. Find out soon enough, partner. 
All right, so here we're starting on uh, the dig. The dig is a mission that I am very. I have a, a few bad memories with the dig, specifically because it's the first mission that uh, my good friend Jonah had me try to play on hard mode uh, before uh, before I was really uh, before I was really ready and familiar with the StarCraft two mechanics. And as such, um, I, I did not do well. Yeah, you got an attack right away. That's not something that happened during the earlier campaign missions. At least we know what happened to the other mm. expedition. You see, uh, what happened there, why I was unable to save my marauders, because my mouse uh, kept fu uh, was fucking up. I, I just recently replaced my mouse, and my mouse fucking up is going to be a constant thing while we go through Heart of the Swarm. But while we're going through Wings of Liberty, I only have a couple of mouse problems go through. They have perfect formulas for button presses, but imperfect grasp of the controls. Uh, we're taking down the pylon first so our marines can actually advance uh, advance on these parts. And yes, siege tanks are factually one of the best uh, units that the Terran get access to. I will never be using them beyond this mission because uh, despite the fact that Terran are actually really good on, on defense with siege tanks, you're supposed to figure out how to micro them on offense and I'm not good enough to do it. I do not have the mechanical skill to uh, to micro uh, siege tanks. Yeah, because you have to because they can't access long range until you mount them, and you have to micro in order to mount them. You have to micro in order to unmount them, so that they can move. Let's get some siege tanks deployed on the high. Yes, we agree that. Uh, all right, yep, yep. Take position on the hill. Of course, this is this is another important StarCraft II reference. Is take take the high position. And boom! Kaboom, baby! Mm, to be honest, the, the siege tanks, when they are not siege set, they're still viable combat units, but they take a while to produce, they're a bit expensive, and they eat up a bunch of supply. So I prefer to use Goliaths when, uh, when I'm going uh, for uh, mech, mech strategies. We prefer when the game just gives us siege tanks so that we don't have to build them first. Yeah. Control of base structures to you, Commander. Whoosh. Which is something that multiplayer doesn't really do. You can't you can't start the game with vehicles. You start the game with a base and with some workers. The power of the sun at your well, if you build custom campaigns for multiplayer or for multiplayer exposure, you can uh, gift uh, you can gift uh, random units on the map to whoever finds them. Ooh. At least Age of Empires 2 allowed you to do that. <laughs> so we set a perimeter and protect the drill until we're through. Just glad we've got siege tanks. Yes, Jim's yes, James, we are glad that we have siege tanks. Um Oh boy, those siege tanks. The the interesting thing about this mission is that there are two different ways to act to complete it. You can either just wait uh, you can either wait for the uh, drill to a finish uh, to finish drilling, uh, to finish drilling through and pick up your objective, or yes, or you could also destroy all the Protoss forces on the map. Destroying all the Protoss forces on the map is damn near impossible unless you go uh, met, uh, medic marine for the entire run and get some uh, and get some really interesting micro pushes. But I'm not confident enough in my ability to do that, so that is not what we will be doing. Instead, we will be you know waiting for the. Uh, we will we will be waiting for uh, the drill to do its job. Right. So you don't have to protect the drill. It's just it's you just do good. have to protect the drill, but uh, protecting the drill is significantly easier than it, than it sounds like. Specifically because, well, we're going to be doing marine medic, and marine medic is you know uh, really really cheap and easy to reinforce. Yeah. Because while because while other branches would be concentrating on development of vehicles or Ghost Academy, all you're doing is just creating a force that is already competent and and rapid in progression enough to destroy whatever it is you have to take out. Yeah, human or AI. The laser drill must survive. Yes. Eventually, well, actually, that's the thing that I should exp uh, explain in the next part because this but this mission is going to take us two parts. It's it's the first of, of several missions that'll take us two parts, yeah. mostly because there wasn't really a good cutting point for me. I wanted to show off. I wanted to show off us getting the uh, uh, bonus objectives as well because getting the bonus objectives in this mission is a bit annoying. 
you actually have to have vision on them uh, in order, and you have to use the drill in order to uh, get them and you have to have vision on them so we do have to actually expand outwards slightly yeah this is a really even pace map I see a jump cut in our future where 50,000 of those health points is just gonna boop disappear <laughs> Mm. So it's new in the world of cloud as we as we continue to set up our base. Well, uh, we find that uh, sumo is playable in Bloodborne after all, provided that you know you can actually get a good sumo wrestling match, maybe one in every twenty games. So about five percent of the time, you actually run into somebody who knows why the hell I'm trying to attack him while wearing absolutely no armor. Ah. Or weapons. We use our fists in sumo, and the fight is not over until someone is dead. However, if you're fighting a noob, it could take about five minutes for that to happen. <laughs> As Pascal was mentioning, we picked up orbital supply depots before the start of this mission, which actually makes it so that uh, it is significantly easier for us to to finish base building, specifically when it comes to supply, since orbital supply depots just our supply depots that literally come down from the sky. They just need to, you know, actually have a place to land. Incoming! The interesting thing about this map is that our line of sight is significantly expanded, so we have the ability to see uh, uh, where and when the uh, the enemy units are building up to, uh, to form a dedicated attack on us. Yeah, 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 all your talk about routes and guns and stuff. Just get me a pack of smokes. <laughs> Slowly building our forces. See, this is, uh, this is where a jump cut might have been, uh... A little okay, but it's, it's all right. It's yeah, right. I like, but I like watching, again, I like watching we're, we're the here for two parts. The, the second part is going to open up with a with a relatively uh, uh, relatively massive jump cut. Well, yeah, we got the gist of it. Um, at home base, we have a gigantic fucking laser, um, not unlike Moon Beta Alpha and Moon Bay Zappa, and Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. That uh, we are that soon we are going to fire a laser at the. Uh, Earth. Well, no, or, we're, we're already firing the laser. That's what the HP on the Zelnaga Temple door is. I know it's not on screen all, all that often, but that is what we're doing. It's not very, it's not quite as climactic as the final laser, where only one push of the button can cause the total destruction of cities. It's also not quite as powerful as the Death Star laser. I'd say the Death Star laser would be the superlative laser among lasers in folklore and films. Um, it most certainly is somewhat superlative, but uh, only uh, only because the, it, it was a uh, pretty significant surprise attack uh, uh, from the Empire. So, in about. 20 minutes, our electronic screwdriver will finally take the hinges off of the Templar's door. Yep, and that's what we gotta do. We have to survive until until it is done. We are almost one quarter the way through the door. And... Building some bunkers... Personally, I don't really recommend bunkers in general, but mm, they do have their uses. And there we go. We're more, we are officially a quarter of the way through. You see, we were willing to let it go at 23% damage to our sacred door, but 24%? That is unforgivable. Mm. So, now we have the ability to actually direct the, uh, the Draken laser get, uh, drill towards enemy units instead. Personally, the only thing that I actually bothered to uh, focus down what, are the heavy mechanical have we units like the Colossus and Immortals, as well as the Archons. Oh, because you can use the laser as a weapon. That's yep. very interesting. And in the next part... We'll use that laser as a weapon a bunch. Be safe, everyone.
Nice. 